Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, Twin Flames, weekly conversation. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna keep it pretty short today. Um, uh, it is Labor Day weekend here in the United States. I hope you guys are enjoying your Labor Day weekend. Um, depending on when you're watching this, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are enjoying it, whatever. <laughs> um, but we're doing a barbecue tonight and I have a bunch of shit I need to do in relation to that, but I definitely want to get this conversation out here for us. Yeah, before I get to that. So that's not going to be a large, huge long intro. Um, I'm going to save it anyway because I do want to put out a video just explaining my take on what the Twin Flame journey is. I know a lot of people are really confused about it, um, and that's okay, you know. I find myself getting confused too. It happens. Um, but I just wanna put forward, you know, what I've learned about what the situation actually is, um, and why I would not wish it on my worst enemy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, uh, well, maybe I'm not kidding. Like, I, 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 I do wanna say, um, for any people that, uh, you know, have heard about the Twin Flame thing and are like, oh my god, I want a Twin Flame, oh my god, oh my god. Well, no, guys, it's it's not as glamorous as you think, okay? It's a lot of struggle, it's a lot of work, um, but ultimately, with that said, it is, um, I've found, without getting too deep into it now, but I've found that the Twin Flame journey is really more about self-realization and, like, a method towards becoming the best version of yourself than you've been ever okay um so there's that i am going to you know collect my thoughts on that and um put out a video you know explaining what my journey's been like um and what i've learned about the journey about myself through the journey throughout the journey um i might pull some cards to help you know bring some messages from the universe in but anyway, that's going to be in the future. Um, the one other thing I do want to say, other than the fact that I will be at Om Shanti tomorrow, Monday, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Om Shanti is in the East Village of Manhattan on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. The link to the um, website is in the description box below. You can go to the website, give them a call, um, and schedule a time to come in for a reading, or you can just walk in whenever you have the time. I am there from 11 to 5 p.m., but there are many other great readers there, too. If you want to check them out, there are astrologers, um, all kinds of different people that are there doing their own thing, um, working with, with divination in their own way. They have a lot of great material books. Um, lots of They have a really nice card selection if you're into tarot and oracle cards. They have a fantastic crystal section, um, with all kinds of beautiful gems and stones and crystals and all that. Um, there's one person there, her name is Marta. Martha, she does uh, crystal wrapping. So if you wanted to get like a crystal and have her wrap it right then and there and put it on a necklace for you, she can and will do that for you. Yeah? Um, so check it out. It's a great store. I really love it. I love being a part of it. Um, one other thing I want to mention. Uh, someone suggested doing that I go live on YouTube and I've actually been wanting to do that for some time. Um, I just didn't know how to do it, and after this last comment that somebody left, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, but after that comment, I had like a, an epiphany. I was like, oh my god, why don't I do the weekly Twin Flame readings live? Whoa! Mind blown. Yeah. So, I'm planning on doing that next week. Um, what's the date on that? Just so that we can have... Give me a second here, guys. Give me a second. Give me a second. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm in a really great mood right now. So, next week... Next Sunday, September 9th, September 9th, I'm planning on doing the next Twin Flame weekly conversation live. Um, I'm thinking around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's usually a good time for, that's actually usually when I start, I do the Twin Flame videos. So let me know if that works for you guys. Um, and let me know if there's a time, maybe that's a better time for you. But I'm thinking around 2 p.m. I'm going to start... We'll have a little combo. We can chit ski, chat ski. I will, you know, do the mirror reading for the twins at that live for you guys. I might even have, if I have the time, I might even, you know, pull some cards for whoever's there. You know, it might be fun. And yeah, I'm excited about it. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be really fun. Okay. Excellent. Let's get to it. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. Okay, let's get it to it, guys. So... 
doing a, oh God, my glasses are dirty. Um, <laughs> so doing the, the typical twin flame mirror reading. Okay. We've got the deck on the left is symbolizing the divine masculine deck on the right is symbolizing the divine feminine. Um, I will be pulling the, uh, relationship spread from the animal spirit guides here. And then I will be closing the reading out with some Oracle guidance from the light worker. Yeah. The light worker Oracle. Um, please keep in mind, this is a mirror reading. So this, I am putting this reading out here with intentions for us to understand what is going on, mainly what's going on within the internal balance of masculine and feminine energy within all of us. If you are new to my channel, then you are not aware of this yet. If you are, if you have been watching for some time, you should know by now that I am very much centered around finding balance within between masculine and feminine energies within just whole complete energetic balance within. You will not come into union, whether you're a twin flame or you're looking for a soulmate or even like a divine partnership mostly. Soulmates are a little different, um, but like between twin flames and divine partnerships, you will not come into that union with that partner, with that, with that divine partner until you have reached union within. Okay, so that is what my readings here are um, are after. That's what I'm here to do. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> never mind. Um, 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 what else? Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, let's do it. Everyone, please take a deep breath. Get settled. Get comfy. Let's connect. Yeah, deep breath. Ooh, that feels nice. Let's do one more, guys. One more. Ready, in. And out. Ah, hey there, everyone. Okay, all right. Hey, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved at this moment in time. And I'm gonna go ahead and extend this. This is mostly for Twin Flames, but also um, you could watch this if you are seeking a divine partner, some sort of um, divine partnership, maybe even a soulmate. Um, if it's, and if this doesn't resonate with your specific situation, um, there are, I'm still picking up that there are still a bunch of things that you can take from it in order to improve certain elements of your life. Yes, that is one of the things that I've learned that a twin flame situation is about. It's about being a torchbearer. It's about teaching others, teaching the world really about divine love, unconditional love, pure love, that kind of thing. Okay. So even if you're not on a twin flame journey, um, you're, you're not really even looking for a divine partnership. You just kind of want to look for a soulmate, or for some reason you were just attracted to this video to watch it. I'm pretty sure that there are going to be some nice nuggets for you to take on to improve your own personal situation. Yeah? Excellent. Okay. So, <sighs> so spirit, please bring forward the best messages for the Twin Flame Collective and anyone else who wishes to join in to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us an accurate representation of the energies of the divine masculine represented by the deck on the left and the divine feminine represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are interacting with each other individually and mirroring each other as divine twin flames. And also as how they are interacting with each other as divine twin flames. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, divine masculine, let's get to you first. Divine Masculine. Now, as I was shuffling here earlier, before I started the, the, the video, um, as I was pre-shuffling, uh, the Ace of Swords popped out for you, amongst some other cards, of which I can't really remember right now, but the Ace of Swords was is the one that I really remember. Um, and even now, I'm hearing Epiphany, Aha Moment. Um, you're, you may be... Uh, Divine Masculine Collective, whether this is internally, like the Divine Masculine within you, or the, the, the person within 
of this connection that is embodying the divine masculine energy. And it doesn't even have to be like what you embody the most. If you are just embodying the divine masculine energy right now, at this moment in time, as I am, you know, channeling these energies, then this might be relevant for you. But there is some sort of epiphany that you're, that you're probably going to be having if you haven't already um, concerning love, uh, sure. But ultimately, this is just really concerning truth. And this really could be anything. I just feel like there's something that's going to be revealed for you coming up. If it hasn't been already. Uh, could be around some sort of deceptive behavior around people surrounding you. Um, truth. You might be gaining some clarity on how to uh, exit or remove yourself from a situation. Um, you may just be desiring to speak your truth, to bring some sort of truth forward. Which would be, which would make sense. I mean, that's been a common theme for the Divine Masculine Collective recently. Well, not even just recently. Just like overall, being authentic, speaking your truth, being honest, you know, integrity, that kind of thing. All right, Divine Masculine. One more shuffle. Um, and I'm still seeing orange for you. So that's, you're probably being real about your emotions, with your emotions, that kind of thing. Which is... Which is good. It takes strength, it takes integrity to do that, and that's an excellent thing. All right, Divine Masculine, your energies are set. Divine Feminine, what's going on? What's going on? I'm seeing yellow for you, Divine Feminine, and that's new. Um, truth, honesty, clarity, illumination, action. Taking action. Like moving forward with your life. Not allowing yourself to be held back anymore. Um, shining your light, letting your power speak for you, letting your presence speak for you. That's really nice, Divine Feminine. I just heard, let the truth be told. There could be, <laughs> there could be an energy here of the feminine energies really pushing the masculine energies to be truthful in some way, to be honest, to be standing in your integrity. Uh, I feel like the Divine Feminine, you're very much, okay, reset. You're very much in this place of power, of standing in your own power, owning your power, and just letting that shine for you. Like, you really don't have to take much action. Your action right now, Divine Feminine, is in action, but through shining your light. And that's excellent. Oh man. Okay, so as I was shuffling before, um, before I started the video, uh, <laughs> oh boy, the um, a bunch of cards flew out. Uh, one of them was the Knight of Cups. The other, one of them was the Tower. Was the Tower. And look at that! The Tower. All right, Divine Feminine. So we've got a Tower moment on our hands. Okay. What's what I'm picking up here for the Divine Feminine Collective right now, there are some of you that are starting to realize that you actually may not be on a twin flame journey. Or you actually like you may not be on the like the actual path. You might not be a twin yourself, or the person that you thought was your twin actually is not your twin. If uh, what I'm really picking up here for the most part is this is an energy of dealing with that accepting that coming to terms with that like as in like acting like that is the truth like in some now for some people yes that is actually the case that has been an ongoing theme for some time now um for a bunch of pe different people that have been doing readings for the twins and all that that's been something that's really been coming forward um there's also an energy of being like just like taking on that energy and being like okay well what if this isn't my twin you know, and that I think would be a healthy exercise in the form of detachment. Okay, we've got the alchemist or the magician in reverse. We've got the page of wands in reverse. In this deck, it is the princess. And look at that. That knight of cups came back out again. So both of these cards, the, the, uh, the tower and the knight of cups came out while I was pre-shuffling the deck as flyers. So... Very interesting. I'm picking up like some a sort of halt. 
Now, this tower moment, um, this, I've learned, this is Mars energy, okay? The tower moments, uh, tower energy. So this, um, this is like the spark, the initial jolt of energy that really gets something off the ground. And this, and what I was picking up also of Divine Feminine, your action is in your inaction right now. That is being reflected in the alchemist or also known as the magician and the princess or page of wands in reverse. Okay. With the magician in reverse, you're not really, you're not, you're not, you're not manifesting anymore. You, it's like you stopped, you stopped doing all of these things or you might be pulling back from doing a lot of the same things you were doing in the past to manifest things. Just taking a break, I'm hearing, for some of you. Um, for others of you, this is the realization that you are not actually in a twin flame situation. For some. For many others, it's not the case. But for some, there is a realization that, no, this is actually not what you thought it was. Some of you are deciding to stop dealing with this type of thing altogether. And I really feel like this is mainly, it. that goes hand in hand with those of you that are realizing that you're not either on a twin flame journey or this person that you thought was your twin is not actually your twin. What that, what's coming through is that in that sense, if that's what's happening, then you're, you're like really like stopping everything that you were doing that you thought was in line with like the whole twin flame thing and blah, blah, blah. Like this would be the example of, um, not manifesting in this way anymore. But then with that said, for those of you that are releasing this a certain person, releasing the twin flame thing altogether, or for those of you that have just like you're 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 going through this, you're seeing this as this tower moment, this this moment of um being in a position where it's possible this person that you thought was your twin is not actually your twin and even if that's not the case you're just kind of like taking on that energy and you're seeing it as an opportunity to grow even more this is allowing someone to come in whether it be your actual twin or whether it be someone else that was blocked by the space you were holding for someone you thought was your twin okay and that, in and of itself, could be a tower moment. Like, you say say, say you're kind of like, all right, cool, well, I guess this guy or this woman, this girl isn't my twin, so bye. I'm going to go do something else. And then all of a sudden, boop, they show right back up. That same person that you were kind of like, well, I guess this isn't my twin anymore. Like, that, in and, of, in and of itself, could be a tower moment. The realization that once you stop doing so much to manifest this... They come right along in, like that right there could be a tower moment for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, awesome. So let's get into the timeline here. Current energies, well, first set of current energies for the Divine Feminine Collective, we've got the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. Coupled with, whoop, the King of Wands. The King of Wands is upright. Okay. Honestly, what I'm getting with this right now, this combination, I started to hear something and then I cut it off because it sound it sounded really weird. But I was I was hearing that the divine masculine wants you to stop being so damn independent. <laughs> And that's exactly why I cut that off. And I know I shouldn't have because it was, it was, it was like the divine coming through speaking truth. Um, but look, divine masculine wants to be able to provide, wants to like masculine, the masculine energy wants to be able to be the masculine energy. And I really feel like 
and I guess I'm guilty of this too. I do re uh, resonate with the feminine collective more so than the masculine, even though I have been, you know, balancing both energies. But I mean, me personally, I've been on such a hardcore, like, independence kick. Like, I, like, I can do everything on my own. I don't need anybody else's help. That, in turn, ran me into the ground just to a certain extent. And it's incredibly intimidating. The masculine energy wants to be able to come into your life and feel like he can provide something to it. And that's what this is talking about here. So the real message behind the fact that the masculine energy, like the divine masculine wants the divine feminine to stop being so damn independent, like, okay, sure. But the real, the real message behind that that the divine is bringing forward is it's time to balance. You have to, we have to start balancing how much, how independent we really are. And it's not weak. It's not a weakness to be able or to be willing to relieve, to, to let go of some of the responsibility in order to allow someone else to pick that up and balance the situation out a little bit more. Okay. But I don't get anything really bad from this. It's just the universe is saying to the divine feminine right now, it's like, okay, you don't have to go so hard anymore. Like, we get the message. You can do it. <laughs> we get it. We get it, divine feminine. We get it. We, we know how powerful you are. We know how strong you are. We get it. We just need you to, okay, you can, you can, you can take a break now. <laughs> you can breathe for a second. Phew. Okay, great. That's nice. <laughs> okay, second set of current energies. We've got the Page of Cups in reverse. Coupled with... Ooh, the star in reverse. Mm. All right. Give me just a second here. Just trying to channel this one. Aha. <laughs> okay. So check it out, guys. Your healing is not going to come about until you do some self-discovery. Until you start looking like this page here, or in this deck, the Princess of Cups. You see, Princess of Cups. You see how she is gazing into that cup and almost looks like she's having like probably a telepathic communication uh, conversation with that fish, right? This is about self-discovery on an emotional level, all right? The one thing that is holding most of us back Honestly, whether it be masculine or feminine, but the one thing that's holding us back from reaching the stars, from reaching this wish fulfillment, from healing, because that's what also the, the, the star represents, healing, is a lack of self-awareness. Is a la Especially on an emotional level, is a lack of awareness of what it is that triggers you. Why does something tr trigger you in that sort of way? What does that represent? What does that need to, what needs to be healed around that? Self-discovery, self-mastery, okay? This is what's holding us back. And so for many of us on this journey, for those of you that are, are having this epiphany, like this person really might not be your twin, you have to face that. I mean, I'm facing it. I'm looking at the situation as objectively as I possibly can and being like, all right, cool. This message is floating around for the Divine Feminine, for the Twin Flame Collective. Mostly I want to say the Divine Feminine Collective. So, okay, I'll bite. What if he's not my twin? What does that actually mean? Does that mean I could have been wrong about this situation? Absolutely. But it's not, it's not completely like that, right? Because ultimately, I know me personally, I have been following my intuition as much as I can. And I've been doing what I can <laughs> to make sure that I have the clear enough connection that I, that as I possibly can, right? So in that sense, I kind of feel duped in a little way if this person really isn't my twin. But it's okay. Why? Because ultimately, I have gone through some serious self-discovery and some healing. But for those of us that are on this journey that are refusing to see anything differently, you are standing in your own way when it comes to healing. And to be quite honest, entertaining the idea that someone actually might not be your twin is an excellent 
form or as an excellent exercise in detachment. Boop. There's that. All right, Divine Feminine Current Challenge. Aw, look, the sun. Well, how is that a challenge? I don't get it. Pride and ego, maybe? Or, or, because I just looked at the tower here, maybe your current challenge is seeing the silver lining. Aha, because the sun is not reversed. The sun is upright here. Okay, so your current challenge is seeing the bright side. The sun is coupled with the three of cups. This is a union card, guys. It could talk about third parties. So maybe your current challenge is the illumination of some sort of third party. Maybe that is your tower moment here. Finding out about a third party. But what I'm really picking up for the most part is the current challenge for the Divine Feminine Collective is understanding that union will happen. You will get the union you desire. Now, if someone is not your twin flame, or if you're, realizing, if you're realizing that you may not be on a twin flame situation at all, like not even on the journey, that doesn't mean you still won't get the union or the, the celebration that you're looking for. It's coming. Just because you might have been mistaken about the whole twin flame thing doesn't mean that you're going to be, de be denied your truest desires. The universe is not going to do that to you. Yeah, but that's the current challenge for the Divine Feminine Collective, believing and understanding that union is going to happen. And I just heard it's probably going to be way better than you ever even imagined. And so an excellent exercise in detachment. Don't worry about whether it's with this one person or not. Let that go. I mean, for me, I'm going to speak personally. For me, that the main struggle when it came to that was coming to terms with the fact that I was probably wrong about this person. I, I, even as I say that, it, even as I say that, Spirit's like, no, Eric, you weren't wrong. But at the same time, it's like, well, okay, but what if I was? What if I am? Like, that throws my whole, doesn't that throw my whole credibility out there to the, to like, to, to the wolves? How could I have been so wrong about this thing, but then I can do these readings for people? You know what I mean? Like, this is, a, it was, it has been an excellent exercise for me in detachment, in um, acceptance, going with the flow, becoming, being okay with chaos and not having all the answers. Because yeah, sure, I can read these cards and I can give people um, my understanding of what I'm feeling for their energies, but that doesn't mean I know everything. Shit, in the, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know a damn thing. And that's okay. See, that, that cycle right there, in and of itself, is a tower moment. I hope you guys are following along. Okay, Divine Feminine, finally. Upcoming energies for you. We have got the Four of Pentacles in reverse. Fucking right, Divine Feminine. Let that shit go. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Okay, all right, fine. Four of Pentacles is coupled with... Ooh, the Queen of Cups in reverse. Yeah, this is going to be really emotional for you. It's probably going to suck. This is probably going to throw your emotions all over the place. But what I'm also seeing is a release. A release of what you, again, because the Queen of Cups talks about, um, it sometimes depicts someone that is just really holding on to their emotions, like not giving at all. She's got her emotions contained in that cup and they're staying there. But with, the re with it in reverse, it's like now you actually have an opportunity. When you release this in a physical sense, you have an opportunity of releasing yourself from all the emotional baggage you may have been holding on to. Okay? Boop. There's that, Divine Feminine. But look at this reminder here. And look at, I told you, I told you, your current challenge, Divine Feminine, is believing and having faith 
that union will happen in some way, shape, or form, whether it's with this person that you thought was your divine masculine or not. And underneath the deck, we've got the Knight of Cups. When you release this situation, when you release your expectation, when you release your attachment, when you just be happy with where you are and how much you've accomplished on this journey so far, you free up space for the universe to really bring some, I heard knight in shining armor in. I mean, I'm a little skeptical when it comes to that. I, I don't know. I don't know about all that knight in shining armor bullshit universe. But then, here's the universe saying again, what was that first message? We need you to be a little less independent. Ugh. Fine, universe. <laughs> okay, excellent. Divine masculine. What's going on, bro? We've got the seven of pentacles. More energy of reaping what you've sown. Wow. You're still, you're still going through that, huh, Divine Masculine? Okay, I want to see what, what the rest of the cards are. Oh, look at that. We've got the Three of Pentacles. <laughs> Shit. The Three of Pentacles in reverse. We've got the Five of Cups, upright. And Judgment. Oh boy. I mean, this is, this is heavy, Divine Masculine. This is heavy. Um, what I'm getting here, what I'm getting here for the Divine Masculine Collective, you're still in a, in a position or a situation where you're, you're, you're understanding that you, you're reaping what you've sown. And this was a message that came out, was it last week? Or was it two weeks ago? I don't remember now. But it was specific for the Divine Masculine. You, you're reaping what you've sown. And so now this is in your, this has moved, I believe that was in the current challenge of the time. But now we have progressed. Okay, we have some progress going on because now it's not just so much in the forefront, like in your energy surrounding you. Now it's in your overall energy. So this is something I'm picking up that this is something you're really processing. And you're coming to terms with the fact that you're getting, you're reaping what you've sown because of a lack of self-mastery here with the three of pentacles in reverse. So that's part of that aha, that epiphany that I was talking about with the Ace of Swords that was coming out before I started the video for you, okay? You're also realizing that there are some people around you that are not team players. And so they have absolutely helped affect what you are, what you are sowing, or I'm sorry, what you are reaping at this point, okay? And there's a lot of regret and remorse for things that have happened in the past for things that are about to happen in the future, like with um, needing to leave some things behind. There is a lot of regret and remorse when it comes to the past. Um, but the shining, the, the silver lining here is judgment. Resurrection, rebirth, second chances, reconciliation. I really feel like with judgment here right now, upright in this situation, I really feel like you're starting to answer the call. Like the universe has been calling out to you and you're actually thinking about picking up the phone this time. More than just to like, huh, look, they're calling again. It's like, oh shit, they're calling again. I think I should pick up now. Some of you may have already picked up the phone. And so now the universe is working through, working with you to get you to understand what's going on around you. That's a good thing, but it's still heavy. I get it. It's still heavy. First set of current challenge, or I'm sorry, current energies for you, Divine Masculine. We've got the Three of Swords in reverse. Okay. All right. So we're releasing the heartbreak. That's good. Some of you might still feel like you're stuck in a perpetual vice grip <laughs> of heartbreak, all right. But again, the universe just said to me, you reap what you've sown. So if you were out there dishing out heartbreak left and right because you didn't want to deal with commitment, because uh, whatever, then you're gonna get it back. Okay. Three of swords in reverse is coupled with 
Excellent. The Ten of Swords. And that's upright. And that's literally what I was just saying. Releasing the heartbreak. Releasing the cycles that have kept, that keep bringing you heartbreak. This is absolutely what that Ace of Swords was talking about. That flyer that came out before I started the message for you guys. Before I started the video. Putting an end to this. I'm done. I don't want this shit anymore. I don't want to feel heartbroken anymore. I don't want to break other people's hearts anymore. Good on you. Second set of current energies for you, Divine Masculine. We've got the Nine of Pentacles. We've got mirroring, guys. This one is upright for you, Divine Masculine. Stepping up. Showing up. Taking responsibility. That's good, Divine Masculine. Nine of Pentacles is coupled with ooh, ooh, the King of Swords in reverse. Interesting. Mm. King of Swords in reverse and the Nine of Pentacles. What is that message? I feel like you're cutting someone off. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Here's the deal. Because when it came, when it came out, because when it came out for the Divine Feminine, it's the Nine of Pentacles in reverse with the King of Wands. And with that message, the universe, there was a message coming through of the Divine Masculine wants the Divine Feminine to stop being so damn independent so he can step in and take care of her for once. Okay. Well, here is the depiction of that from the Divine Masculine side. And it's the King of Swords in reverse. So this is why I got so caught up. I was like, oh God, the King of Swords in reverse is not a good thing. At least that was my gut reaction. But it's not as bad as I thought. Because what this is saying is the King of Swords in reverse with the Divine Masculine and the Nine of Pentacles here. Divine Masculine, if you are truly wanting your Divine Feminine to like take it down a notch, you're not in alignment there. Because ultimately, the Divine Feminine is going to do what she needs to do for herself, point blank, period. Ain't shit you going to tell her about it. And either you can roll with it, or you can kick dust. I'm sorry, you can kick rocks. Broski. Now, I'm going to temper that by saying, Divine Feminine, you do, at some point, you need to like let go of the reins and be like, okay, I'm going to let you drive for a little bit. Ain't nothing wrong with that, y'all. Nothing is wrong with that, okay? Especially if your counterpart is in your life and actively trying to be there for you, there is nothing wrong with like taking a step back and letting someone else help you, okay? But Divine Masculine, you need to be very careful about requiring your Divine Feminine to, quote, take it down a notch, out of ego. All right, bro, that's not cute. Like, the Divine Feminine is not going to water herself down to feed your ego. Never. And if you are in a situation in which that is required of you or that is happening, that is not a healthy situation. That is toxic. At the same time... Swing that pendulum to the other side, and too much independence is toxic as well. There has to be a balance, guys, okay? Excellent. Current challenge for you, Divine Masculine, we got strength. Standing in your power. Wrestling with your ego. Aha. Strength is coupled with? Woohoo! The King of Pentacles. I'm hearing standing in your power in an earthly sense, Divine Masculine. Um, getting your stability in check. Your current challenge 
is, yeah, there's a lot of financial stuff. Financial strength, um, physical strength, uh, foundational strength, being able to stand on your own, being able to be the king of your world in a physical sense. That's your current challenge right now. That's what you're working on. Stability is what I just heard. Your current challenge right now, Divine Masculine, is stability. But it's not just that. It's like I'm picking up this energy that I'm having trouble putting into words, but it's allowing, it's allowing yourself to stand in your truth, your integrity, your honesty in the physical, like in the 3D. Because I feel like a lot of the Divine Masculine Collective have already come to terms or are becoming aware of who they are energetically, spiritually, and all that stuff. So the current challenge would be to have the strength to stand in that in a physical sense. Not just like in your mind and your thoughts, not just like acclimating with it and acclimating with the energies within, blah, blah, blah. No, now the, the, the challenge is really bringing that forward and allowing that to be seen in the physical. Okay? Sweet. Upcoming energies for you, Divine Masculine. We've got Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment, Indulgence, Drinking a Little Too Much, Are We, Divine Masculine? Couple with Whoop, Woo, Woo, The Queen of Swords in Reverse. Holy shit, yeah, but you might be drinking too much. <laughs> oh. Look at this, Divine Masculine. You've got the counterparts in your spread. You've got the King of Swords in reverse, and you've got the Queen of Swords in reverse. My, my. So what does this mean? Upcoming energies for you, Divine Masculine. You might be releasing someone that has had a grip on you for some time. Um, that could be what this wish fulfillment is with the Nine of Cups. What I am getting, for the most part, though, is there is an energy of being manipulated. And I think this is really an extension. And then look at, there's more mirroring. I'm so sorry that I'm kind of a little bit all over the place. But look, there's more mirroring here in the upcoming energies for, for both Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine, you've got the Queen of Cups in reverse. Divine Masculine, you've got the Queen of Swords in reverse. But what I was saying also, there is an energy of this being... Um, this being an extension of what we were talking about last week um, with the, the twisted, narcissistic, feminine energies that the masculine has been plagued by over their lives, um, that have been hurt by, have been um, manipulated by, okay? I'm hearing in relation to this, Divine Masculine, in your upcoming energies, I really feel like you're coming to terms with it and you're working on coping with it. Um, so that could be why you're indulging, you're drinking, you're doing drugs, you're probably escapating, like trying to like fill the void, um, you know, to, in the moment to make you feel better. But ultimately what you really need to do is just deal with this energy and release yourself from it. And ultimately that's what I'm seeing here with the Queen of Swords in reverse and the uh, Nine of Cups upright. I'm seeing your wish fulfillment, part of your wish fulfillment comes with releasing yourself from this queen of swords. But you, uh, the message is coming through as you need to take it upon yourself to do it. Ain't nobody gonna do it for you. And until you take those steps, you're forever gonna be bound to it, is what I just heard. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's get into the animal spirits. See what they have for us this week. Three quick shuffles. All right, cool. Divine Masculine. Okay, well, we've got two, <laughs> so I'm going to go with it. Camel and Fox. Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine. Whoop! Okay, we've got two for you. We've got Otter and Zebra. Both of these are in reverse. I wonder... 
No. Okay. Um, 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 shadow dynamic of the relationship. Shadow dynamic, please, spirit. Shadow dynamic, please, spirit. Shadow, shadow, shadow dynamic of the relationship between a divine masculine and divine feminine twin flames. Shadow, shadow aspect, please, spirit. Here we go. We've got two more. Buffalo and tiger. Damn, we are on just doubles today, aren't we? All right, and finally, the illuminated dynamic, please, spirit. Nightingale. Okay, well, we got one there. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, let's get into this, shall we? Now, both Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine, your cards came out reversed. And then the, co the, the collective, or the energies between the both of us are upright. That's really interesting. All right, first, we're going to go with Camel. For the Divine Masculine. Camel. Resourceful, independent, knows oneself. The camel can handle absolutely anything as it carries a wealth of nourishment within. This wondrous creature is self-reliant and handles challenge with ease. Even in the face of excess heat, judgment, or anger, the camel searches inside for the cool elixir of water to calm the situation. The camel represents the ultimate form of bringing opposites into balance, fire and water, and being responsible for one's own reactions. The camel is a wonderful traveler and is especially fond of trips to faraway lands. When in balance, camel is calm, content, and has a sparkle in the eye. When out of balance, camel is dehydrated and lacks vitality. To bring into balance, one must go on a, uh, a pilgrimage. Yeah. Self-mastery, Divine Masculine. Three of Pentacles in reverse. Camel knows himself. Do you know yourself, Divine Masculine? Fox is next for you. We wit. Here we are. Fox. Strong. I'm sorry. Smart. Strong partner or mate. Wise teacher. The fox is an enchanting creature with plenty of mystique to go around. Fox personalities are skillful in business and make great teachers. They are quick to learn and adapt well to new situations. Foxes are ideal life partners as they commit to relationships for the long term and their natural charisma keeps things exciting. Fox energy helps us stay true to those most dear to us. When this card appears, reconnect to those you love. Foxes don't do well when they slip away. When in balance, Fox is magical, ingenious teacher, and monogamous. When out of balance, Fox is sneaky, unsure of their identity. To bring into balance, one must practice partnership and connection. I mean, you got two cards, Divine Masculine, two cards that ask you the question, do you know yourself? Are you balanced within yourself? Who are you, Divine Masculine? Huh. I mean, I guess that's a rhetorical question, but the universe wants an answer. And the universe wants an answer only because they're trying to help you out. Like, if you don't know, I mean, the universe knows who you are. Yeah, sure. But if you don't, then you can't really effectively ask the universe to provide you with, with what you want. Because you don't know what you want. That's why the universe is asking you, if who are, who are you, Divine Masculine? Right? Right. All right, cool. Divine Feminine. You ain't off the hook, honey. You got both of your cards <laughs> reversed, too. <laughs> okay. First, we've got Zebra for you, Divine Feminine. Where you at? There we go. Zebra. Eccentric. Creative. A visionary. Zebras are the most precious of gems. They are young at heart, well-cultured, and have an undying curiosity about life. 
Being in the company of a zebra personality not only is a delight, but also opens our minds. Be prepared. Their potent magic is contagious, and you may soon find yourself in a faraway land, expanding your worldview while having a blast. Zebras also like to contribute to the global health through environmental or volunteer work. This card may be a hint to pack your bags. When in balance, Zebra is worldly, enthusiastic, and fashion forward. When out of balance, Zebra is jaded, pouty, and veil. To, uh, not veil, vain, <laughs> excuse me. To bring into balance, one must embark on an epic adventure or do make some art. Okay, so this is definitely an energy that the Divine Feminine could be feeling should you be aware in the awareness that you, the person you thought was your twin is not your twin. You could be very jaded, pouty, and feeling pretty vain right now. But Zebra is also encouraging you to travel, to seek, to seek out new opportunities, to move to a new energetic space. Even if you just want a break from your divine masculine, I'm hearing, move to a new energetic space and just breathe, be. The connection will still be there, right? Right. Hey, okay, next we have Otter. Boop, boop, doop, boop, boop, doop, boop, boop. And Otter came out for the Divine Masculine last week? Was it last week? I don't remember. Otter, unobstructed joy, playfulness, contentment. Perhaps the most joyful creature within the animal spirit deck, the Otter represents absolute bliss. Otter energy is the playfulness of a child available to us at any age. They have a giddiness and reverence for life itself without the presence of doubt, worry, or skepticism. Imagine yourself with a little more honor otter energy. What would life look like? What would it take to bring you there? The otter card begs these questions and wants to transport us to that precious place as soon as possible. The celebration awaits. When in balance, otter is full of love and needs nothing. When out of balance, otter is gloomy, sighs, and makes silly excuses. To bring into balance, one must have a dance party or a celebration. Now, this is energy of the universe trying to help support the divine feminine and like pulling her back up. Don't be so upset. All right, cool. So you thought someone was your divine masculine, was your twin flame. Come to realize, oops, they're not. Big deal. Think about how much you've learned so far. Honestly, I would say, because like, okay, you could feel like you're, you've been duped. But have you really been duped if you've come this far on this path and you've done so much and you've learned so much about yourself and you've done so much healing and all that? Have you really been duped? Or was the universe just giving you a reason, an excuse, the excuse you needed apparently in order to really do that work to begin with? Whoa! Mind blown, right? You haven't been duped. Okay, fine, you've been tricked a little bit, but you wanted, you needed it because you weren't doing the work on your own, right? So now the universe helped you out. They gave you a reason to do the work. And look at you now, Divine Feminine, right? I mean, this is all stuff I've already been through with that, with that whole thought. It's really funny that this is coming out so heavily right now because... I've been seeing this message all over the place by a number of different readers. And now it's finally like coming to a head here. I just heard integrating. We're integrating with this. Yeah, okay. Sweet. All right, cool. Cool, man, cool. So for the shadow dynamic, we've got tiger. Mm. I love tigers. I just love big cats. I love them. I just want to cuddle them. <laughs> <laughs> I am so silly. Okay. Tiger. Lunar force. Ease in darkness. Feminine energy. The tiger hunts at night, at one with the silence, fearing nothing. 
This card reminds us to take in the wild darkness to allow the lunar forces to soothe and heal our spirits. Sensuality, receptivity, and devotion are all heightened in the midnight hour, and the tiger takes advantage of these boons. Spend some time in silence this evening, drinking in the potent calm. There is nothing to fear in the stillness except the awakening of your own power. When imbalanced, tiger is passionate, strong, and sensual. When out of balance, tiger is overstimulated. To bring into balance, one must practice trataka, or candle gazing. And I've actually been wanting to do that. Candle gazing. Someone made a suggestion on one of my last Twin Flame videos because um, I mentioned like I need to, I'm not that strong as a clairvoyant and she gave me, she mentioned the candle gazing. And I am definitely going to try that. So thank you because you're, I know you're watching now. Thank you <laughs> for that. I really appreciate it. Um, Honestly, what Tiger is saying to me in as, as in lieu of it being in the shadow dynamic, it's saying to use this moment of calm to reset, to resettle, to re-identify, yeah? Like Divine Feminine, I mentioned if you want to like take a break, like take an energetic vacation and go to like a new space energetically that is doesn't really have all the madness surrounding the twin flame journey or like your divine masculine or whatever, do that. Allow it to recuperate you, to, to revive you. Divine Masculine, you can do the same thing. It's not just for the Divine Feminine, yeah? Okay. Buffalo. Grounded yet heavy. Practical yet spiritual. The hubs of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth, yet its heart and mind rise toward heaven. The buffalo sees challenge, hardship, or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment. Therefore, the buffalo does not fear death, illness, or misfortune. Its gentle eyes look to that road ahead, trusting every turn. May we all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss from time to time. And may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. This card is mirroring the message I just brought forward about you have not been duped. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. So even though this might, and look at, look at that. Look, see that lightning strike back there? It's very indicative of that tower. Boop. This is not misfortune. This is a blessing, has been a blessing in disguise, Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Yeah? When in balance, Buffalo is trusting and is a pure presence. When out of balance, buffalo is restless and lacks gratitude. To bring into balance, one must practice prayer or bhakti. Okay? Excellent. Finally, the illuminated dynamic is nightingale. Me. Meep, meep, meep. There you are. Nightingale. Fearless voice, speech, communication, or song. The song of the nightingale is otherworldly. This simple brown bird, almost unnoticeable among the flashy plumage of other birds, transports its listener to the realm of poetry. Nightingale energy is with us when we write, compose, and especially when we sing. It reminds us that music heals the deepest wounds. This card indicates a need to open the bridge between the heart and the voice. Is there something you need to say? How long has it been since you sang? Turn it up, write it down, and let it out. When, out, when in balance, Nightingale sings and speaks freely with kindness. When out of balance, Nightingale feels shy and has a lump in the throat. To bring into balance, one must listen to music or practice music, play music. There's a lot of healing energy in music. So if you're struggling with dealing with what's going on right now, um, this revelation about the whole, you know, what is this really my twin or not, blah, blah, blah. Music will help you, okay? All right. So to close out the reading, we're going to get some oracle message, oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle. And I think I just want to pull one card for the whole collective. We'll see if Spirit has more than one, but I, I'm feeling one card is sufficient. Whoa! Okay. 
Here we go. All right, Spirit, one card, please, for the Twin Flame Collective. Closing out, closing message for the Twin Flames this week we've got. Uh -huh. Cool. First ray of power. All right. So already I'm feeling like this is... I, and I just heard standing in your own power, power, standing on your own feet, on your own two feet, like standing in your individual power, your, your knowingness of yourself and your place in the universe, that kind of thing. Okay? Regardless of what anyone tells you. The first ray of power is energy of conscious destruction. Ooh, look at that. Tower. Boop. It can be used in a healthy way to eliminate the past and allow for fresh start. The first ray also carries the frequency of leadership. See? Standing in your own power, no matter what people tell you. It can assist you to stand in the truth of your light so others can find their way by it. It helps to strengthen your willpower so you can accomplish any task you choose. The, uh, the Ascended Master El Mor Moria, Moria brings you his particular blessings and encourages you to believe in your own strength and to take the in initiative on what matters most to you. That's a pretty beautiful message. Here, let me read this part. If you are confused about which path to take or whether to continue a certain relationship, course of action, or lifestyle choice, the first ray of power will clarify matters for you. When it moves through our lives, whatever is holding us back will be removed, either through circumstances seemingly beyond our control our own control, excuse me, or by our own actions, based on a sudden inner knowing. When the first ray of power is indicated, a long-term plan that was once important to you may suddenly seem as though it needs to change or even be released altogether. Holy moly. Or you may suddenly get the motivation to go for something you have been dreaming of for a long time. Once this ray affects your life, your understanding of what is helpful and what is not can change overnight. The changes will feel very true, freeing, and helpful. Those people, dreams, and opportunities that remain in your life afterwards have survived the, quote, onslaught of divine will. This means that the universe is confirming that they are meant to be a part of your journey at this time. The first ray of power also relates to matters of leadership and politics. Be open as to how your spiritual journey might be helpful in these in the world of politics, whether that be through aligning yourself with a cause that resonates deeply in your heart or through bringing a more open and discerning viewpoint into the often deceptive world of politics. Speaking your truth will be very helpful at this time, not only for you, but also for those around you who are willing to hear your voice and make, your, and make their own choices from a clearer place within. Don't be afraid to be heard. If your life purpose involves either driving a meaningful political cause forward or assuming a position of leadership in some other way, you'll feel the truth of this and be given encouragement from the Ascended Master El Moira, Moria, sorry, Moria, to trust yourself as a leader with heart and awareness. Finally, when this ray makes its way into your life, it is time to accept the loving gauntlet being thrown down by the universe and take your hands off the controls of your life. Detach and be curious. The universe will show you exactly what you need and remove what you do not. If something or someone is no longer part of your life, it will be so that a more beautiful, truthful, and satisfying version of what you are surrendering can come into your world. Ladies and gentlemen, I said that myself. The Knight of motherfucking cups here, y'all. In the Divine Feminine Spread. When you release everything that you've been holding on to, when you finally give in and accept this tower moment that has been creeping up on us <laughs> for some time, and you allow the universe to clear away what is no longer serving you, what is no longer meant to be in your life, something much greater will come in and it will most likely be way better than you ever expected. Remember, the universe loves you and wants only the best and most beautiful life experience for you. Trust it enough to let it happen now. Now, guys. Wait, let me take these off again.
Now. Right now, damn it. <laughs> okay, so there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all to death. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your journey, to be a part of your lives every week. Thank you for tuning in every week. I love you all so freaking much. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you again next week. Remember, I am going to, I'm going to do that live. I'm going to try and do that live. It's going to be the first one. I'm going to set up and see if I can like set a reminder. Um, I'm super excited about that. It's going to be real cool. Uh, it's going to be real cool. Okay. All right. I think that's it. All right. I love you guys. Mwah. Thank you so much. And I'll see you later. Bye.